So what I did, and I didn't do it on camera because I'm a dingbat, is I made what is essentially the bottom of a Krenov style plane. Okay, hang on. We're starting off in the middle, so let me explain. So in the first iteration of these hand plane skate things, I goofed pretty hard. So I cannibalized a few parts from an old hand plane, and that went okay. Then I cut a quarter inch piece of walnut to shape, and that went okay. And cutting this oak block to fit the frog onto the plane base went well too. Great. I got through the glue up okay. And here's where it got a little hairy. Uh, the slot for the plane blade, well, chiseling it wasn't such a great idea. It broke in half and I had to start over, and uh, now you're all caught up. So where was I? I have some really nice oak, white oak. So it should be nice and strong. But now I gotta slice it thin so that I can make a foot plane, hand plane, ice skate thing. I'm an idiot. Let's go. So the easiest way to cut this glue up in half was to, well, just do it on the table saw vertically. I did it in stages where I gradually increased the height of the blade so that it wouldn't be too high in the piece, grab it, and, you know, hit me in the face at 100 miles an hour, or that sort of thing. And when the blade gets really high, I use a push block anytime my hand goes near it because, well, I don't want to lose my hand. So I'm about halfway through. And here's where it gets hairy because the saw blade's very high and I don't have a guard on it to do this. So I gotta be very careful using my push pad making sure that when I flip this now to do the other side, that I've got it exactly where I want it to be. All right, so here's, when you're doing something like this and you're not quite sure you're not exactly in the middle, right? You gotta make sure that when you flip it, you're not gonna do something dumb like this and misalign. You go like this, end over end, just like that. Now, I'm exactly right. You see, because you keep the thin part up against the fence the whole time. Yeah? Boom. Alright, let's do this. So, boom. Two nice thin pieces. This one's the one I'm going to use, but it's a little bit uneven. The cuts are a little, you know, my table saw's not the best. It's got a little ridge right here. So we're going to go to the planer. I'm going to knock it out a little flat. I'm going to knock it out a little flat. Flatten it out. It's good. It doesn't have too much flex. It's very nice. Let's get that sander. Oh, how fortunate. Here it is right here. Alright. Now i got to figure out... I can explain a little bit here. So, these are great. They're pretty good, but they have to hold the weight of my foot over an uneven surface, a relatively uneven surface. So what will happen eventually is that they will flex and that does not make for a good hand plane. So, I needed it thin because I needed this area to not, I, I, the blades aren't long enough to go through a very thick piece the way I have designed this. So this has to be thin, but it also has to be strong. In order to make it strong, I got more wood, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make rails for it, you know? So, from here to here, or so, like spines, like, you know, rails to, to add some thickness and some stability underneath my foot so it doesn't flex as easily. I'm gonna cut this in half. And now I gotta cut these in half lengthwise, and then I'll get my toe hooks out of each end of it. All right. Looks pretty good. To the bandsaw. Those for the tow hooks, and I need rails along the sides 
to go all the way back. And now for the last bit of assembly before I do the final shaping and cutting. I worked hard to get the angle of the chip breaker and the blade and the frog just right because I want these to be as effective as they can because there's a good chance they won't work and I want to give them as good a chance as possible of being effective. And this is pretty standard fare. Make some two-part epoxy, get it in place, pre-drill a couple holes to get the screws through right and put something heavy on it so that it sets. Then it's time to reattach all the hardware and make sure everything lines up right, sits correctly, and that the stress of the tension screws doesn't break the whole thing apart. A little shaping on the bandsaw, followed by a little sanding, and these things will be ready for testing. And what better test than flattening out my gnarly workbench top? this one already. That one's all right. I broke this one in a couple places. Let's see. Oh, I broke off the toes right there. I split the bottom. <laughs> I ripped the screw right out when I caught this caught on a chunk of glue or something on there and it ripped right out. Final analysis. They were fun for a few minutes, but I don't think they're going to catch on. However, it does sort of work sort of actually flattened a lot of this junk and cleaned up a lot of this crap on my bench. So, you know, as far as experiments go, it was fun. I had a lot of fun.